This lesson we're going to learn about ratios, rates, proportions, and percents. A ratio is a comparison of two quantities or amounts. So basically, a ratio is a fraction. So for number one here, we can write it as fraction notation 72 over 76. And then they're saying, okay, well, let's simplify this. Well, I'm going to divide each of them by 4. 72 divided by 4 is 18. And 76 divided by 4 is 19. So 18 over 19 is the simplified fraction. A lot of times we'll say 72 to 76. We can use the word 2 in between to compare them. Now a rate is a ratio with two different units and we're going to try to simplify as much as possible. Okay, unless we're told don't simplify. So if we want to write it as a rate in simplest form, we're driving 120 miles in two hours. Well, I'm going to divide both of them by two so I get 60 miles. in one hour. Another, and so there it is. Okay, but if I were asked for our unit rate, which is our next one, we would say this is 60 miles per hour. Per means one. So that's our unit rate. The next thing we'll talk about is an equation of two equal values is called a proportion. So, and proportions have equals cross product. So, <clears throat> if I'm going to determine whether 10 fourths is proportional to 15 sixths, we can do it one of two ways. We can reduce the fractions or simplify the fractions to see whether they are equivalent. So, I'm going to divide 10 by 2 and get 5, 4 by 2 and get 2, 15 by 3 and get 5, and 6 by 3 and get 2. So these are proportional. So we can write them as equivalent fractions. Or we can cross multiply. 6 times 10 is 60. 4 times 15 is 60. So I know this, yes, this is a proportion. Yay. Okay, but what about this guy? 2 tenths, 5 over 25. If I kind of want to be lazy, I can just cross multiply 50, 50, yay. Or I could reduce, 2 tenths reduces to 1 fifth, and so does 5 over 25. So couple of ways to do it. The other way to do it is to get a common denominator between the two fractions and then rewrite. Okay, so now we're going to solve. All right, so we're going to use cross multiplication and some other equation to, of techniques to solve, and we're not going to round them. So the first thing we're going to do, you know, and sometimes you can figure out what x is when you're just looking at it, and that's really awesome. But let's use the technique. So we're going to do 3 times 20 is 60. And 14 times x is 14x. Because I know this is a proportion. So their cross products are equal. So I'm going to divide both sides by 14. Just like we did in the last section. So x is really 60 over 14. But we're going to simplify that fraction. Because 2 goes into 60 3 times. 2 goes into 14, 7, so we're going to leave it as 30 over 7. Occasionally, my math lab will have you write it as a mixed number, but try the improper fraction first, and then if that doesn't work, convert it. Okay, how about this gooba haba? Well, this is challenging, so we're going to do 5 times x is 5x, and then we're going to, I'm not even going to try to multiply it, 2 ninths times 45. Now we have to remember how to multiply fractions, 
And we're like, yay, we can do this. 45 over 1. Good. 9 goes into 9 once. 9 goes into 45 five times. So we get 5x is equal to 10. Using our strategies for solving equations, we divide both sides by 5. So x is equal to 2. Okay, so now we can solve some application problems, which aren't that bad for proportions. I think proportions are the most straightforward applications that we do. So it says, on an architect's blueprint, one inch corresponds to six feet. So what we're going to do here, you guys, is write one inch, six feet. Cool? That way, now in this second fraction, the units have to match up. Find the length of a wall represented by a line five and one half inches long. So I don't know how long the wall is. So now we're going to solve this using cross multiplication and equation solving techniques. One times x is x. Six times five and a half. And again, we put these in here so it would like reinforce our fraction amundo operations. So 6 over 1, 5 and a half is 11 halves. 2 goes into 2 once, 2 goes into 6 3 times, 3 times 11 is 33. 33 what? Feet. The length of the wall has to be 33 feet. The next thing is an introduction to percent notations. We did a little bit of this in module one. So the idea of percentages, just to tell you, dates back to ancient Rome. And again, the meaning of percent is per 100. So it's always out of 100. So an example is 50% can be written as 50 over 100 or one half. So now, we are going to solve percent problems. So we can think of it as the, like if I'm doing this example, 5% of 700 is what number? The percent is always per 100. So we can think of it as 5 out of 100 is equal to x, which is the part, over 700, which is the whole. So in other words, if I got 5% on a test that had 700 questions, how many questions did I get right? And the beauty of this is that we just know how to solve proportions, so we can just go and do it. As long as we remember it's percent over 100, the, the part over the whole. So here we go. 5 over 100 is equal to x over 700. So it's going to cross multiply. 3,500 is equal to 100x. Divide by 100. So x is 35. Cool. The number that follows the of is pretty much the whole. So I sometimes write is over of so that I kind of know the lingo going on. Let's do the next. 19 is what percent of 57? So let's take a look at this. Percent over 100 is equal to the part, which is your little is guy, over your whole, which is your little of guy. All right? So here's the deal. We don't know the percent. Don't know it, so we're going to write x over 100. Which one is the of guy? Well, it says of 57. And you know, the of guy does not necessarily have to be bigger than the is guy. So don't be fooled by that, okay? Really study the problem before you put it in motion. 19 is the last. So we're going to do uh, 57x is equal to 1900. Now you guys can use your calculator on these, but I just really love division. So I'm just going to quickly divide both sides by 57. So I'm going to do 57 into 1900. So, so let's do the division. 57 doesn't go into 1, doesn't go into 19, but it goes into 190. 
three times. So when you do that, you get 171. Subtract, you get, oh, another three. So it's, the percent is 33 and 19 over 57 percent, okay? But 19 over 57 can actually be reduced to one-third because 19 goes into 19 once and 19 goes into 57 three times. So we can end that problem. And now here is the last problem of the lesson. 30 is 150% of what number? Now let's set it up. So we know the percent. It's 150 and percent is always out of 100. And then it says of what number? We don't know it. So the X goes on the bottom and the is guy goes on the top. So X times 150 is 150X. And 100 times 30 is 30 with two zeros, so it's 3,000. So now I'm just going to divide both sides by 150. And then I'm just going to do a little dividing out here. Um, I can divide both the top and the bottom by 10, so I get 300 over 15. Good. And then I'm going to divide both the top and bottom by Five, so I will get 60 over 3, so I end up with 20 in the end. Now you might be saying 30 over 20, 150 over 100. Yeah, it does make sense because 150 is bigger than 100%. 30 is larger than 20, so I'm good. I'm checking, thinking how things are going to go through. Now that you we've done this lesson, you can do the My Math Lab assignment associated with it. Good luck, ask questions, stay focused, and have fun.